in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home the and bible says that it, there are a group of christians that have the skill and the art of acting like they are serious with god acting like they truly believe his word hallelujah acting like they are serious about growing acting like they truly desire more of him acting as though his word is final authority in their life the bible says having a form the bible calls that activity a what a form of godliness so you pray in tongues like the rest pray you seem to have a zeal you say oh god more of you when you see people getting on their knees you you can act it well scripted play the bible calls it a form of godliness it says but denying the power thereof hallelujah so the proof that your godliness is genuine is that there must be power behind it that it must produce some results that can compel men to see that you are not pretending. I'm telling you, there's nothing that grieves my spirit like seeing many believers acting as though they truly desire God. Acting as though we truly love him. You know, when you raise the song, be thou enthroned, then everybody just keeps quiet and you just lift up your hands and you are thinking about all manner of things. Hallelujah. The Bible calls it a form of godliness. You assume you pretend it. Your room has all of the Jesus signs and everything. You have all the Christian songs on your phone. The Bible says it's the form of godliness. But they deny the power. Something in you tells us that although you are acting in the crowd. But there's something that is betraying that form. Hallelujah. That every time you join the crowd to do like they are doing, sing all the Christian songs, something seems to point out and let us know that, no, there's, there's, there's something not true. And there's something not genuine. Hallelujah. And God has a problem with that. Having a form of godliness. Where you hear the word of God and you jump and say, whoa, hallelujah. But you are the last to practice that word. You truly do not believe it. The true proof that you believe a thing is that you put it into practice. Hallelujah. When you hear an information and you put it to work. Hallelujah. It proves that you believe it. The Bible says having a form of godliness. But denying the power of it. It says from such turn away. That's not even the interesting verse. Verse 6. For of this sort they who creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away by various laws. Seven. This is the verse. Read this. Ever learning. Ever what? Rema. Revelation. More light. More revelation. Piles of books. Are you following me now? King James. Amplified. New Living Translation. The Message Translation. Different tapes by different men of God. The Bible says ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. There are so many believers. They go for every program. Are you following me tonight? They do everything. They, every prayer meeting, every night vigil, every book in town, you buy it. Whether you read it or not, you buy it. Every book, everything, but they are the last to put the word of God into practice. They have sealed their mind from coming to a point where they truly believe and they come to a point where they refuse to be convicted by the power of the truth. 
you believe in tithing, you can teach about tithing, deliver an excellent message about tithing. Are you following me now? You can encourage your roommate, shout, but you are not a tither. These are the kinds of people. The Bible says ever learning. Have you tried to confront someone who is suffering spiritually and when you meet him, he will tell you his own problem. He will tell you and tell you what the solution is, but the person is dying of that problem. Have you, have you encountered people like that? You're trying to tell them, I think it's time to get serious. God, they say, look, even the Bible says it, that in the last day, they this and that and that. Say, turn to the book of this, uh, this chapter one, they even give you the other verse. And the person is suffering. There's nothing as terrible as that. Hallelujah. That you are suffering while you have the solution to your situation. Bible says it's not just the hearers of the word but the doers of the word. The Bible says they heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them. Why? Because it was not mixed with faith. I want to ask you a question. In, I think, 2005 or 6, one day, now I'm not saying you should practice it, this was a rhema. The Lord stopped me from reading my Bible for one week. He said I should not open it for one week. And the reason was because he said I was pretending like I was interested in studying my Bible and growing. He said if I were, if I were practicing one-tenth of the things that I've gathered in my head, my life would have been better than it is. And so he said, hold on. Before you continue in this, your wild religious search that is not producing any result, take an inventory of all the notes you've written in different meetings and apply these things to your life and then you will find true change. And from that day, I made up my mind not to do things as a result of religion. How many of us do quiet time? Six o'clock, you are up in the morning and you hate it. You hate the God that you hate it. You hate everybody that makes you. You just laugh as if you like it. Hallelujah. You know all the scriptures about finances, but there's nothing to show for it in your life. You know all the scriptures about about um, favor all the scriptures about the grace of god all the scriptures about everything for me every time i see a particular area of my life not bringing the fullness of the light and i know that i have that word i know that it has not entered my spirit and then i stop lying to myself i sit down and allow the lord to walk on it and let that scripture be seated in me are you getting blessed tonight because there are many people we we love knowledge and there's nothing wrong with it hallelujah but knowledge that is not applied will not profit you are you listening to me did you know that for over 70 to 80 percent of the messages you hear in church they are not new most of them are only a repetition of the things the holy spirit has been teaching for years that many people have refused to obey it hallelujah praise god I said this some time ago and let me say it again. There is a difference between newness and freshness. Hallelujah. For something to be fresh, it doesn't mean it's necessarily new. Are you listening to me? The word of God may not always come new, but it always comes fresh. So you can hear a teaching on faith that you've heard and it can come again, but it will come with a freshness. That's why you listen to a tape that you've listened to over 20 times. And then, when you're listening to it the 21st time, a light comes in for me. The freshness of the word. Are you following me now? And so, it's important. My first admonishment for us tonight is that we don't just junk ourselves with knowledge and knowledge and knowledge that we don't apply. Are you getting blessed tonight? That's the first admonishment. Because it's our desire here, not just to have a crowd of people come inside and outside and we celebrate and say God is doing great things. Our definition of great things is not just the number of people that come. Our definition of great things is those who hear the word, receive it, understand it, apply it, and they are transformed by it. Then empower others to walk in that same reality. That is our definition of success. Hallelujah. That you, re you believe the word. Do you believe, listen to me. Do you believe 
that the word of God is able to give you a beautiful future? Do you believe it? Or you are just smiling and saying, let me quietly believe or before I frown my face and land into trouble. Do you really believe it? If nobody is with you and you are in your room alone, has it become a reality to you that contained in this word is the key to your life and destiny? Hallelujah. Do you believe that this word was given by God to guide you, to lead you, to instruct you, to show you the ways of the spirit and the ways of the kingdom? Do you believe it? Do you believe that the knowledge of this word and God's principles will set you above in life? Recession or no recession, job or no job, Nigeria or no Nigeria, there's nothing wrong with being a Nigerian. There's nothing wrong with being an African. There's everything wrong with being a disobedient person to God's word. That's what the Bible calls iniquity. A willful, perpetual and continual state of rebellion and hardness to God's word and his principles. Can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? Our fathers took this and they took it seriously and it transformed their lives. Bible says, ask for the ancient parts and walk in them. I don't know about you, but I'm not just preaching this word. I truly believe it. I believe it. I believe that in this word is the secret for life and godliness. I believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I'm not just praying in tongues because power came on me and then I saw everybody doing it. I said, join them more. At least those who are praying in tongues were seeing the result. Do you really believe that praying in tongues can change you? Do you believe that every time you pray, many of you pray in tongues and laugh at yourself, you just shy from the mirror and say, hey God, bro, big person like me, like this, doing that as if I'm a child. All these stupid people. Yet you are praying in tongues. You may even be in prayer band. Let me tell you something. The word that you truly believe and take serious, stop laughing about what God is not laughing about. Are you listening to me? When God takes a thing seriously, take it seriously. I don't like Satan. He's not my friend. I have nothing to do with him. Why? Because that's exactly the same thing with the Lord. I don't have any business with demons. I don't have any business with all of these things. I believe the word of God. The word of God is final authority over my life. I don't believe the word of God because of the whole burden of being a preacher. No, not at all. I believe God's word. It is my daily bread. It is my oxygen. I believe in the leadership of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the voice of the Holy Spirit. The success of a believer is directly tied to the voice of God and the word of God. Let me tell you something. Show me a man who has everything in this life but lacks the ability to hear and walk with the Holy Spirit. And then to live by the principles of God's word. I show you the most vulnerable person. Because he will fall like a leaf at any time. The Bible says, ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. It's my prayer tonight, even as we start this teaching, that we will not be ever learning such that the moment they say anything, you say, ah, I know the scripture. They say this, you say the rema and say all of this, but your life is far from the revelation and the truth that you know. That God will deliver us from the form of godliness and bring us into the reality of godliness where we know his principles. Hallelujah. We've been doing a teaching on kingdom economics. Helping us to understand the structure and the principles of God even as regards our finances. And I started last week by saying that every true apostolic ministry is put by God to address the needs of the people and the needs of society. Hallelujah. When Jesus saw the multitudes hungry, he addressed that need. Are you listening to me? And one of the things that God has committed to us, one of the responsibilities is to make sure that we are not just praying in tongues doing very well spiritually, doing very well academically, and then suffering financially. 
it's unfortunate that the educational system does not have a program designed to teach people God's ways of wealth and prosperity that's landed people in trouble the average person I said last week the average person our concept of prosperity is get up go to school do very well get good grades and hope one day that somebody will employ you and then if you do your best maybe one day you can just hit a fortune and then your life will change hallelujah and then with the current recession parents and people are languishing people are living in fear every day the concept of godfatherism and godmotherism everybody is looking for every human anchor i've said it in this place but let me repeat it i beg you i can go on my knees and beg you take your eyes off men are you listening to me men will disappoint you again and again and again the bible says woe to him who puts his strength in a man he said for by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail ah my uncle is going to do this for me i'll never suffer in this life you don't know how much my father has you don't know how much my mother has there's one house that they built for us there as soon as my father dies like this, we'll sell it. And then this and that. What kind of life is that? And you keep wishing that people die and get out of the scene because you believe. There are so many of us, especially the guys, who are sitting and smiling every time you see your father's paper and you see your name at the wheel. You say, Lord, thank you. What a destiny. I've come to find out that only the word of God can guarantee a secure life do you believe what i'm saying only the word of god we live in a very vulnerable time where if we do not live by the principles of god's word we will suffer and many people have backslidden as a result of finances many homes have been broken as a result of finances and so last week we began by talking about financial freedom how many of us still remember hallelujah we spoke about financial freedom how that financial freedom is not just having money it's amazing how people's concept of wealth and prosperity is just having naira and kobo so you say i have one million in my account i'm rich you are not rich not at all hallelujah how many of us believe is god's desire for you to be prosperous if you really don't believe don't raise your hands you will not go to hell how many of us truly believe don't don't be don't try to no 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 i need you to be serious just lift your hands let me see inside and outside how many of you believe that you will serve god better when you are prosperous hallelujah i am totally convinced this lifestyle of okay let me earn fifty thousand. me my wife i plan to have only two children not more than that and so two children steven and mary two children and then our nice house three bedroom flat no taking visitors and then our little car god just bless us one small jeep and then we live our life how in the world do you want to bless people that way because selfishness has been the order of the day for many people so if you think of wealth from a selfish perspective you don't need much correct but when you think about the kingdom and the agenda of god and the souls that are perishing and how much it costs to bring souls to the knowledge of christ and to equip them you will truly desire the blessings of god hallelujah then we have two categories of people one those who outrightly hate prosperity and that's predominantly because they have tried and used secular means to achieve god's kind of result and so they are reacting to their frustration they forget every time you see all those young boys oh, forget jerry they know what they are touching here and there i said it yes um last week if you refuse to press into certain blessings you will naturally be angry when you see someone getting blessed have you seen someone, a lady who just made her hair and someone is frowning? What has her hair got to do with your, your own life? Find your way. Or oh, somebody just cooks a nice meal and you're frowning. Or oh, you see Aaron with his nice suit and just say, this boy self. You know, it amazes me when people waste their time talking about others and doing all. Why can't you press in for more? Hallelujah. Just sit down and say, busy, always looking fine. Oh, Jerry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And so God is teaching us his ways. Hallelujah. So we'll continue from where we stopped last week. Tithing. We're talking about the subject of tithing. It's important to talk about the things that connect us to the wealth of heaven. Please take it seriously. Take this message very seriously. We're going to pray. The, the subject of tithing. Hallelujah. I want you to know that your first connection, listen, your first connection to the abundance of heaven is what? Your tithe. Say after me, my first connection to the abundance of God is my tithe. One more time, my first connection to the abundance of God is my tithe. Very, very important. Your tithe is a tenth portion, one tenth. According to Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12, the Bible says that will a man rob God? I say an interesting question. Will a man rob God? He says, yet ye have robbed me. But he say, wherein have we robbed thee? He says what? So how do we rob God? There are so many armed robbers around who are crying and asking God to open the windows of heaven. The Bible says that you have robbed me in tithes and offerings. Tithes. Your tithe is a tenth portion of your increase and the blessings and the finances God gives you. In Jewish days, they didn't use money, naira and kobo as it were. Are you following me now? And so, the tithe was a tenth portion of their increase from their farm, their cattle and all of this. For you now, the tithe can be the first, the tenth portion of your one tenth of your income. Are you listening to me? Verse 11, verse 9, sorry. It says, as a result, listen, this is a very, very dangerous scripture. It says, ye are cursed with a curse. Why? For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Are you seeing that if you refuse to tithe, your tithe is not an admonishment, it's an instruction. Are you listening to me? The Bible says as a result of being negligent in the ministry of tithing, there is a curse that comes upon you. Hear me? That's not the curse that is the opposite of Abraham's blessings. Are you listening to me? This is a separate curse. We are going to be reading it now. The word curse there means woe. That you make yourself vulnerable to mishaps. Situations and circumstances that will frustrate your Christian work, especially your finances. This is God speaking. He said, because you have chosen to rob me, according to God's order and God's system, the house of God was supposed to be financed and blessed by the tithes and the offerings. So all of the people are blessed by the priests. And then they go and walk. When they bring the blessings, they take a tenth portion and take it to the storehouse of God. Hallelujah. And then as a result, they perform their kingdom obligation and then they are entitled to certain prophetic blessings. Verse 10. Bring ye how many? How many? Bring ye all the tithes into where? The storehouse. That there may be what? This is the purpose of tithe. You know many times we pray and say, Lord, as if the tithe will evaporate and just fly into heaven and then it will be at the right hand of God. No. The tithe is to the end that there may be meat in my house. Hear me. The Bible says, and prove me. I put my reputation to stake. That if you perform this kingdom obligation, prove me. Say yet the Lord of hosts. If I will not, that's the first blessing. I will not what? Open to you the windows of heaven. You know what the windows of heaven is? The last time the windows of heaven opened before that time, manna and quail, is it in your Bible? Fell and fed the people, ate and had enough to their food. The Bible says, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven, the windows of heaven are not open to you just by prayer and fasting and is by there are certain principles. Are you following me? This is how God designed his system. You cannot try to act in another way and expect God's results. If I will not open to you the windows of heaven, number one. Number two, and pour you out a blessing. God will pour a blessing. And he describes that blessing. He says, 
that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I will pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11. Let's see the third blessing. And I will what? One of the few places, if not the only place in the scripture where God says he will do something on your behalf for the, for the devil. Every other place he says you cast out devils. You rebuke Satan. But God says on account of tithing, I make it a responsibility. I'm going to be teaching you what the devourer is. The devourer is not an eat. The devourer is an activity. Is a demon spirit. Are you listening to me? The activity of demon spirits over your finances over your health, over your blessings. Have you not seen families that the moment they collect salary, everybody just starts getting sick? Until that last cobble finishes. That's the activity of the devourer. Many of our parents think that, okay, you change a job or get promotion or add another job. That's never going to solve. You do not solve a spiritual problem using physical means. Hallelujah. It says that I will rebuke the devourer. This devourer is the one in charge of all of this recession and the rest. A great servant of God called Apostle Les Kraus was having a time of prayer, traveling in the spirit. And suddenly he was caught up in the spirit. And he went into a room and he saw certain demons, Satan and two other demons. Hallelujah. And then they were discussing talking about different things about the saints and he was standing and watching. Hallelujah. And one of the demons just looked at him and the Holy Spirit told him, they said the name of that demon is called Apollyon and he referred him to the book of Revelation where it talks about Apollyon. Are you following me now? And then he began to describe the ministry of that demon and all of these things and he said they are the ones in charge of stopping the finances from reaching the sons of light and then he said something that caught my attention that satan prefers a healthy church than a prosperous church isn't that surprising that means satan will prefer that you have a revelation of divine health than to have a revelation of prosperity. You know why? Because when you are healed, you are healed for yourself. But when you are blessed, you are blessed for others. You can't be healed for another person. Are you following me now? So every time you talk about prosperity and finances, all hell goes haywire. And Satan tries to do everything to cripple us and stop us. That's the reason why in the world system, if you are rising to certain levels of wealth and prosperity, what happens? They initiate you into an occult. Remember the Freemasons, the Illuminati, and all of that. They tell you, okay, we want you to join this sect. And then they communicate to you the agenda of Satan. Hallelujah. So that you will be the one storing the wealth. And then you can control the activity of Satan. And the Bible says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he, did you see that he called the devourer a he? And he will not destroy. That's the fourth blessing. He will not destroy the what? The fruits of your ground. Your ground is anywhere you sow. It can be your job. It can be your business. Are you following me? It can be your academics. Anywhere you, he said he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Number five, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. There are many people who are involved in projects that can never finish. They never start a thing and complete it. The Bible says that the hand of Zerubbabel that has started this work, that same hand will complete it. All of these things are the curses that come as a result of not being a faithful and a diligent tither. He shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. He said, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before his time, saith the Lord. Verse 12. He said, and all nations shall do what? All nations shall call you blessed. Because the Lord will so bless you that that is going to be your testimony. Not just in your village, not just in your community. He said, all nations will testify that truly this is the blessed of the Lord. 
And the last blessing, the seventh blessing, for ye shall be a delightsome land. Ye shall be a delightsome land. It's interesting, the Bible uses a metaphor. It says you shall be a delightsome land. Not like, you shall be a delightsome land. Hallelujah. And so many of you can now see the reason why, although you love God, although you are praying in tongues, certain things in your life are not just moving. Because you have not yet begun to operate the spiritual principles that will activate these things. Can I tell you something about the word of God? Every word that you see inspired of the spirit. By the way, let me just digress and say something. I shared with a few people yesterday. I just feel like chipping it in. We're learning a lot of things tonight. Look up, please. We call this the Bible. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. Not every word that is written here. Please don't stone me. Please don't stone me yet. Not every word that is written here is called the word of God. Hallelujah. In this Bible, demon spoke. Is that correct? In this Bible, Satan spoke. In this Bible, unbeliever spoke. Is that correct? Please follow me. <laughs> In this Bible, Jesus himself spoke. In this Bible, false prophet spoke. Are you following me now? So when the Bible gives us the future of what he calls the word of God, the word of God is any part in this Bible that is able to give you spirit and life. It says, the words that I speak, this is the proof that they are from me. They will give you spirit and life. So, not every word that is written here, as it were, is life-giving. Many of you want to attack me with the scripture that says, the Bible says, all scripture was inspired of the Holy Ghost and is for our profiting. Calm down. Let me explain this to you. Please, let me have two people, Aaron and someone, just come. Let me use you. Hallelujah. Now, look up. I want to explain to you the difference between a true statement and a statement of truth. Are you following me now? So that we can understand the Bible and the word of God and get blessed from it. Look at this. Josiah is a lady. Hallelujah. Is that a true statement? That's not a true statement. Is that correct? But if Aaron tomorrow is recording all the activities that happen in Koinonia and he's writing it, he will say while Josh was speaking, he said, I follow me now. He said, Josiah is a lady. That's a statement of truth because I really said it. But is that a true statement? No. There are many statements of truth. So what the Holy Ghost did in the Bible was to breathe upon people so that they can record the events as it happened. Whether it's life-giving or not, that the supernatural ability of the Holy Spirit came upon them so that they gave the details and the intricacies of Scripture. Now it's left for the Holy Spirit to fine-tune and help you search through it and pick out the principles of God and that part that is able to give you life. Hmm. Hallelujah. People committed atrocities in Scripture. Lord's Lord's daughters, two of them slept with their father. Hallelujah. Is that statement life-giving? No. But did it happen? Yes. Are you following me now? I will tell you why I'm saying this. I hope you know. <laughs> Help us, Lord. Thank God. This is Koinonia. I hope you know that there are many things that Paul said in the Bible that are wrong according to the character of God's word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul was a man like every other man. This is where I'm driving to. There are many people who have taken just anything. How many of us have had that statement? If it's in the Bible, I will do it. I'll never show you the scripture. But I can, I can show you a place in, in the Bible where Paul permits a woman to sleep with a man. Is Paul Jesus Christ? I hope you know that Paul was also judged and will also be judged. Jesus Christ is the perfect theology. Are you following me now? Whether it's Paul or Apollos or Joshua Selman or e and I, I'm saying all of us are subject to the integrity of God's word, the principles of the kingdom that are contained in that word. 
Do you know that every Christian sect today uses the Bible to practice whatever they are doing? The Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it preach any message. Are you listening to me? I can take a scripture and the daughters of Lot slept with them. That can be my message. Is it in your Bible? Are you, are you getting blessed? I can take it and twist it, arrange it nicely, package it for anybody's selfish desire. I can just use a scripture and they gave. And then I stopped there. I say I'm going to expound on that scripture and they gave. Because it came out of the Bible. So I am saying that the Holy Spirit must help us to understand that scattered in these scriptures we call the Bible are the statements of Satan, God, false prophets, true prophets, all kinds of things. The Holy Spirit, that's why when you study your Bible without the Holy Spirit, you can never get blessed. So many people choose the Holy Spirit and leave the Bible or say, let's take the Bible and leave the Holy Spirit. No, no. So when the Bible says all scripture was inspired by the Holy Spirit, what he's trying to say is that the Holy Spirit made everything. Are you listening to me? He made the people to write all of these details. But you can't sit down and start claiming and say, and Lot, and um, the daughters of Lot slept with him, and they slept with him, and meditating on the word. What is the meaning of that? There are many things that people did in the bible i hope you know that if we were in bible days maybe they can archive what we are doing now and they can say maybe the epistle of koinonia or something and add it hallelujah do you realize that there are not only 66 books that were written it's in your bible john 21 the Bible says there are many other works and miracles that Jesus did that were not recorded here. But these few have been recorded to the end that we may believe. Are you following me now? I'm not talking of all those demonic and satanic books that everybody has around. Are you getting blessed? I just digress to put this point. So, I can make a statement like this. And although it's incorrect, but it was contained the bible and then many people just take it hook line and sinker god bless you sir Go on, sit down. i'm just trying to tell you that you must press and get the reality of god's word not just scripture to put in your head are you listening to me you must get the spirit and the life of the word of god i have another challenge for you for those of you who have studied bible history I hope you know that in the days of Paul and Ananias, these 66 books were not there. Are you following me? Question. What did they call their own word of God? Because it was long after they died. I hope you know that. That their epistles were archived together by the Spirit of God and brought to what we call today the Bible. At that time, they had only the law and the prophets. And the law and the prophets was not given to everyone. It was kept in the temple. So when they said the word of God is quick and powerful, what was their word of God? Hmm. Sila. We're talking about finances. Let's go back. Hallelujah. And so your tithe opens you up. To the blessings of God. Can I tell you something brothers and sisters. Please look up. You are not doing God. I will say it again and again. You are not doing God. Nor pastors. Nor ministers. Nor any church or ministry a favor. When you pay your tithe. Are you listening to me? If you understand God's system. And the operation of God's system. You will realize that when you pay your tithe. You are climbing the ladder. You are opening up yourself to financial abundance. Hallelujah. No matter how hard you work, no matter what other principles and laws you know, if you are not a tighter, you will never get blessed God's way. You can get blessed through any other means, but I'm telling you, you will never get blessed God's way. And every time you are prosperous in a way that is not of God, the Bible says, do not envy the wicked. Their end is destruction. Are you getting blessed tonight? And so God wants us to be faithful titans. It's one way of being open to the things of heaven. Abraham gave a tenth 
a tithe to Melchizedek. And Melchizedek blessed Abraham. He said, blessed be Abraham, possessor of the heavens and the earth. Hezekiah gave his tithe. He gave a tithe and a tenth portion. There are many of us that have this mindset that God wants my money. He wants to take my money. How can I give tithe when I have only 5,000 naira pocket money? Or oh, my mother gave her tithe before she gave us. Our parents give tithe. As big as you are, you say your parents give tithe. Can I tell you something? Every finance that comes into your hand that is yours for your profiting and your consumption, you should tithe from it. You cannot tithe your school fees because it's not money for your consumption. Are you listening to me? Don't let anybody manipulate you and maneuver you and say, just bring it. You know, women of God like money. Hey, just bring it. Say, school fees, say, yes, bring it. Remove 10%. No, no. God gives us wisdom. You can, they cannot give you money to keep for a project. For maybe you, you are keeping money for a group. And then you get up and just say our lives must move forward. Without their consent and everything, you just tithe and do all. No, 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 no. The Bible doesn't teach us to be foolish people. But the Bible teaches us to be doers of the word. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to be a faithful tither. One more time. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace to be a faithful tither. For the last time, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to be a faithful tither. Hallelujah. It's so important. So your first connection to the economy of heaven is your tithe. Now, how does God bless us as tithers? This is, why, this is what I want to tell you. Because many believers do not know how the blessing comes. How does the blessing come? There are two principal ways God releases the blessing. Number one, the favor of God favor with God and with men. This is one vehicle of receiving the blessing of God as a result of your tithing. Favor with God and favor with men. Please write it. Number one, favor. That's how the blessing is channeled. Favor with God and favor with men. Number two, ideas, concepts, and insights. Ideas, concepts, and insights. Samadeh and me wrote a book, Ideas Rule the World. If you, can, if you can lay your hands on the book, you can read it. A very powerful book. Ideas, concepts, and insights. Can I tell you something? The Bible says in Exodus 31, it says, I have called Bezalel, and I have anointed him with the spirit of, of wisdom and creativity to uh, do all kinds of craftsmanship and this and that. There is something called the spirit of Bezalel. God giving you ideas, concepts, insight. In Job 32 verse 8, the Bible says, there is a spirit in man and the inspiration, the breath of the almighty maketh him of understanding. These are the principal ways that God channels these blessings to us in the earth. Concepts, ideas, insights. Are you listening to me? You are a faithful tither and you just sit down. And God just opens you up. Look at the gentleman who came and shared the testimony about his book. Are you following me now? God gives him what? Insights. You are just sitting and God gives you an idea. I hope you know that when God gives you one idea, it can, you can bring a generational blessing to your generation. Just one idea from the Lord. Most of the people who brought inventions to our world today were people who were faithful and they adhered to God's principles. So favor. Suddenly doors begin to be opened unto you. God brings favor. He was saying he was just sitting down and a text message just came into his phone. Many of you do not believe in this manifestation of God. Where strangers come to feed your flock. A stranger just calls you and says, give me your account. I say, forget Jared, they are just your friend or a stranger. 
I'll never forget in 2007, someone called me 6 10 in the morning, called me shaking under the anointing and said, Is this Joshua Selman? I said, Yes. He said, Send me your account number. I said, Ah, who are you? He said, That's not the most important thing. God gave me an instruction, send me your account number. And that was the first time I began to see this manifestation of strangers. Reverend Dr. Uma Okpai said that one time they needed some money. And then from the money God instructed him, they gave tight and they did everything. He said he came to the drawer of his office. And suddenly, the Holy Spirit just told him, open your drawer. And he opened and he saw the exact amount in an envelope written to him. Nobody could have accessed his office. He called his secretary and said, what is this? Say, I don't know anything about it. Many of you do not believe in these manifestations. These are the blessings that come on account of being faithful titers. See, I'm telling you this. Take it seriously. Take it seriously. Many of our parents would have been better people today if they had the opportunity to receive these teachings. Are you listening to me? And so, the favor of God and wisdom, ideas, concepts, insights. Hallelujah. When you are a faithful titan. Number two, your offerings. The Bible says in tithes and offerings, we connect to the economy of heaven with our offerings and our givings, really. Not just your offerings, but your, your giving. Luke 6, 38. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Can you help me, media? Luke 6, 38. The Bible says, give. And it shall be given unto thee. It shall be given unto you. Give. And it shall be given. Listen. Listen. Let me show you something powerful. It says give. And it shall be given unto you. This is how many of us read the scripture. Let it be given unto me. Then I will give. Yeah. Hallelujah. Many people say Lord. If only you bless me. Make me a millionaire and see what I will do. God is saying you will never become one. It is your giving that will make you one. Are you listening to me? Don't ever... See, isn't it amazing that whenever you need breakthrough from God, God will demand from you. The Bible talks about a, a widow in Zarephath. It says that she was about to eat her last meal with her son and perish. And the Bible says that God sent a prophet to her. And when he went, he said, please bring me water. And while she was going, he said, and prepare a morsel of bread for me too. And she got angry. She said, I, I'm about to eat the last one so that we'll die. Isn't it amazing that when your resources are running red, that's when God begins to demand that you give. Many people feel that that's when he wants to destroy and kill your resources. That's the way he connects you to the blessing of heaven. If your mindset does not change, you'll be a greedy and a stingy person and you will never truly grow and be blessed. Are you following me? The Bible says give and it shall be given unto you. And then it tells you how it, I mean the, the quantity. He said, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over. <laughs> Interesting. Shall, so your blessing is in the hands of men. Shall men give unto you? If every one of us here becomes a millionaire, I hope you know that one million will not fall from heaven. It's already in circulation in the hands of men. But when you perform your kingdom obligation, are you following me now? God will cause by the wisdom of his spirit and by the manifestation of wisdom in your life for now what we call the wealth of the wicked to find its way into the hand of the righteous. He said, for with the same measure that ye meet, Without shall it be measured unto you. So never say the size of your seed does not matter. Hello? Say God, just give God anything. No, no. At the same time, don't let anybody twist your hand. I'm going to be showing you some things about giving. Are you following me now? Because there are too many people that have twisted the hands of God's people because they want gain. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. So your giving is one way. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 6. But
For this I say unto you. Listen. He which soweth sparingly. Listen. He that sows shall reap. Is that correct? He that sows sparingly shall reap. But he shall reap what? Is it in your Bible? You can choose to believe it and comply to the principles or just argue with it and trivialize it. He said, he that soweth sparingly, he shall reap sparingly. And he that soweth what? Bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Now verse 7 is where I want to challenge a lot of the wrong teachings about giving. 7. Every man according as what? He has proposed in his heart. Not according to how they twisted his hands. Let me tell you something. The Bible does not teach that gospel of coercing and threatening people into giving. That's very satanic. That's very demonic. I don't care who is doing it. It's not consistent with God's word. Hallelujah. To say if you don't give, you will die. If you have up to 20,000 naira in your account and you don't bring out money, tomorrow you will be caused. No, sir. The Bible doesn't teach that. It says, every man, according as he has purposed in his heart, you can be encouraged to give. You can hear a word and it will provoke you and ginger you to give more. Are you listening to me? That if you empty your account today, let it be that you were convicted or instructed by the Spirit and that you are doing it cheerfully. Cheerfully doesn't mean you are laughing. Cheerfully just means from a gladdened heart because sometimes you will cry. Sometimes it will be your Isaac. Am I blessing you tonight? It says, let him not give grudgingly. Brothers and sisters, one of the reasons why so many believers give and don't get blessed is because they give grudgingly. Hallelujah. I cannot tell you how I've counseled people over the years who come and meet me and say they forced me to drop my phone. They forced me to remove my shoe. They forced me to remove my hair tie. They for that ministry of forcing, forcing, forcing. The man of God doing it may not be fake. But I'm telling you that principle is not consistent with the character of the word of God. I apologize if, I'm, if I seem to condemn. I, I don't preach condemnation. Are you listening to me? But I need to address this truth because I want to help us. It says what? For God loves who? A cheerful giver. It doesn't mean he loves a smiling giver. He loves a giver who does things from his heart. Have you seen people who drop seeds immediately afterwards? They just came to the man of God and said, Sorry, oh, I will not lie to you. That thing that I dropped, I don't know what came upon me. They just forced me, give me back my thing. That's my father's answer. Verse 8. Verse 8. It says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That he always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto all good works. So, by your giving, God will bless you. Listen, hear me. Your giving is not by force. Your giving is a choice. Hallelujah. Your giving is a choice. The Bible talks of giving God your tithe, your first fruit. There is also the principle of first fruit. The principle of first fruit is a way of honoring God. Are you listening to me? It was a Jewish custom. Well, it really existed before the Jewish custom. It really wasn't in the law. Are you listening to me? For those of you who have been taught that tithing is part of the law. No. Tithing started way before the law. Alongside with principle of first fruit and the rest. The Bible tells us that Cain and Abel came and Cain gave of his firstlings and his fat. And, I mean, Abel gave of his firstlings and his fatlings. Hallelujah. And Cain just put vegetables on the, on the altar and then nothing happened. He wasn't blessed. So, it's a way of showing God that he's first in your life and even in your resources. Are you listening to me? That if many people do it in different ways, they can give their salary for January or their earnings for January or their first salary when they, are, when they get a job, that also is not compulsory. 
The only compulsory thing in scripture is your tithe. Every other thing is a revelation, it's an admonishment, but if you love your life, just like salvation is not compulsory, however, it has consequences. One of it is failure in this life. The second one, which is the greatest, is hellfire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you getting blessed tonight? Hallelujah. And so this is very, very, very important for us to understand. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. It says, honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. Proverbs chapter 3, from verse 9 and 10. It says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. Verse 10, so shall thy bands be filled with plenty. It says, so shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst with new wine. These are the blessings that follow those who are serious with honoring the Lord with their first fruit and with the increase of their substance. It's amazing. When you count the offerings in church, you see 10 naira, 5 naira. Immediately after that, you see gala, 15 naira. Um, juice. You see people buy all kinds of things. A rich man comes with 1 million and just squeezes um, 15 naira. Just counts it and just squeezes in the offering. Give him, give him. I will give. And as his pass, just drop it. And you are frowning. Listen. It's our revelation of God. You must come to a point where you esteem God. I cannot be spending 200 naira eating a meal. Spending 10,000 naira buying clothes. And then when it comes to investing and securing, the Bible says, lay not for yourself treasure on the earth here. Where armed robbers can come and steal it and where it gets. It says, lay treasure. I hope you know that you have a heavenly account. Read My Time in Heaven by Richard Sigmund. And he gives us a picture of the bank in heaven and the activities there that every time a believer tithes and he gives it is credited to him in heaven i know that these things sound very childish and it sounds like cartoon but it's true whether or not you believe it there is a heavenly account it is credited by your giving so number one your tithing number two your giving Number three, your kingdom investments. I'm teaching you your supernatural connection to the economy of heaven. Kingdom investments. When there's a project on ground. When, when I hope you know this, with time, maybe not now, I will show us that the reason why the years of Hezekiah was averted was because they gave and they gave, they sowed and gave diligently to the advancement of the house of God. Can I tell you something? You must come to a point where you realize that your financial commitment in the house of God is not just a favor you are doing God. It's a kingdom responsibility. The purpose of right is so that you can be a responsible citizen. So if you know that your right in Christ is for you to be prosperous, you must realize that God designed his house to flourish by the givings of God's people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take away that mindset that makes it look like pastors are just here to give and chop your money and do all of these things. Are you listening to me? So your tithe, your supernatural connection, your tithe, there are blessings that come from it. Your giving, your commitment in the house of the Lord. I'm not just talking of financial commitment alone. Are you listening to me? I'm talking of the commitment, your time, your efforts, your energy. He said, they that be planted in the house of God, they will flourish in the courts of God. He said, in all age, they will still bear fruit. These are the blessings that follow those who are serious with God and can commit their finances to God. Hallelujah. So every time, let me tell you something. For a very long time, I thought this concept of tithing and offering was just a manipulation of people to walk in my, on my mind. And I know that there are people who do it. Every meeting is offering meeting. Every meeting, I've said it here, your seed does not do everything for you. Hello, I will say it again. Your seed cannot do everything for you. 
Otherwise, millionaires would have been the most successful people, spiritually free, free from demons, free from everything. Satan is still oppressing the rich, oppressing the poor. Your seed cannot do everything. The Bible says, this is the victory that overcomes even our faith. However, your seed can secure a glorious destiny. The Bible says in Genesis 8, I believe, verse 11, 12, it says, as far as the earth remains, am I correct? Seed time and harvest. Genesis 8, right? Yeah, 22, sorry. While the earth remained, seed time and harvest. Are you seeing this? The Bible is giving you God's principle. It says so long as the earth remains, it's a law. Seed time. Whenever you sow, you will reap. Seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Question, has cold and heat stopped? Has summer and winter stopped? Has day and night stopped? Why will seed time and harvest stop? Let me ask you a question. How many of you have planted seeds in your farm and you went back the next day and said, you must grow. There are certain laws in the spirit that once you obey them, they engage themselves and move into action immediately. Hallelujah. Very quickly, I want to talk about one other issue and then we'll round up for now. I want to talk about the concept of the attitude for giving and then your storehouse. You must especially your tithing i want us to just dwell a little on that tithing <clears throat> hallelujah look at me god doesn't just want your money don't carry your tithe for many of you your attitude towards giving and tithing has a long way to go in bringing blessings to your life many of you just come and then when you see a man of god or see offering basket or they say tithe has come out you just say ah it's true you just squeeze one you just bring all of them and say, ah, this is a new one from the bank. You just bring out one very dirty tata thing. You say, ah, the, the finance department will use super glue. And then you just bring it out. And then you come and stand and squeeze it. And while they are praying, you are busy eyeing people. And you come and say, God, Shabi, you have disturbed me. Take. Oh, yeah. Bring the, bring the blessing for me. Your attitude. Buy envelopes. Package your tithe. Do it with revelation. And can I tell you something? Do not drop your tithe anywhere. They will not pray and speak a blessing for you. That's the connection. Are you listening to me? It's not just say, ah, tithe. Then bless you, just open his pocket. I say, put it, Jerry. And then put it, say, bye-bye. No, no. In Jewish days, they didn't just drop tithe like that. There was a prophetic blessing that was spoken upon it. It is that blessing that will activate that law. Are you listening to me? This is very powerful. That's why every time people bring tithes, no matter how busy I am, I say, no, hold on. Every time you drop a tithe and the man of God doesn't say anything, politely demand and say, sir, I request that you speak a prophetic word. And not just anything you like. You don't just speak what you wish. You can speak that on an offering, but there is a specific blessing for, it, for the tithe. Are you listening to me? You cannot listen. You can't drop tithe and then I say, Go your house will experience exponential blessing. No, that's not the blessing that is tied to tithing. The Bible makes us to understand that there are seven prophetic blessings. And so it's your job to prophesy these blessings and release it upon the tithers. Can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? I submit to you, these are not things that I read in textbooks alone. These are realities by, that by the grace and the mercy of God we are abiding by. There's one thing to teach something you know or you read from a book. There is another thing when you are teaching your reality. Are you listening to me? This is the reality. By the grace of God, the treasurer is here and, and, and the financial secretary is here. From the time Koinonia started, there is no week we have not tithed as a ministry. How in the world are we not going to be blessed and rich? Are you listening to me? That's why we keep increasing from glory to glory in our finances. There's no magic about it. Look at the young people that are responsible for this and look at what God is doing. Doesn't it tell you there is a supernatural dimension to it? We have been faithful by the grace of God. 
As a ministry to his glory, we do not owe God one naira. That's why every time he keeps giving us ideas, concepts, like he said he will, insight. That's why he rebukes the devourer for our sake. Every time I'm praying over the tithe of ENI, I say, Lord, everyone who comes under the covering of ENI, I attach them to the blessings of this tithe. That's why some of you have not been tithing yet. You have been prospering. We have been praying for you, but now God is teaching you so that you can begin to move into certain levels of blessing. See, ah, that's the secret. I'll be chopping my tithe and quietly be coming for Friday meetings. Hallelujah. Many of you need to teach. Do you know that for many of you, this is the solution to the cry of your families? They think it's more jobs. or more. It's not. I've said this thing again and again. I don't know how many times I'm going to emphasize. If you think that you are going to work for every blessing you get in this life, get, re get ready to die. Guys, you want to build a house. How much is one block? How much is one block? If you want to work for everything, I know many of us like working. <laughs> Get said to die young. There is the blessing of the Lord. There is the blessing of the Lord. I'm telling you, it has nothing to do with your age. Many of you say, where do I start from? I don't have anything. I have been owing God and all of that. We'll not talk about storehouse. We're out of time. Hallelujah. But have you gotten something tonight? To understand that your tithe is a spiritual obligation. Every time you package your tithe, brothers and sisters, never you think God just wants your money. I hope you know before you were born, heaven was made of, of the streets of gold. And it, it didn't increase. The gold, the size of the gold didn't increase because you were born. Let me tell you something, friends. God wants to bless us. The Bible says, He who did not withhold his son, but offered him, how much more with him will he not give us freely all things? God wants you to prosper. Say it after me. God wants me to prosper. Many of you say, eh, but I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing any business. I'm not doing anything. Before your business will come, you can be stepping into the prosperity of God. The purpose of business and all of these things and all those ideas and laws we put is to continue the flow and to prove your faithfulness and to position yourself for increase. Hallelujah. You can begin to activate these principles right now and see favor come into your life. But many of you say, ah, Shay, you are just talking because you are a man of God. Everybody knows you. Say, every week at least somebody must bring offering. Was I born a man of God? Hallelujah. Obedience to the word of God. You may be sitting down and say, okay, our family, where do we start from? Call your parents. Collect these teachings and send home. And tell them, please, let's begin to tithe. Let's begin to tithe. Kenneth Copeland was in debt. One of the richest, the wealthiest ministers, the principal partner of Reinhard Bonke's ministry. I hope you know that. Kenneth Copeland is the major partner behind Reinhard Bonke's ministry that has come to bless many of us in this country. Hallelujah. And when he came, he was in debt of over $250,000. There was nothing he didn't do. And then God showed him this scripture and he made up his mind. Hallelujah. He said he will never collect debt. Can I tell you something? Friends, look up. Stop collecting debt. We'll talk about that maybe next week. Stop it. I thought I could never do without it. Many of you think you cannot do without it. Things will change the day you make up your mind. Hallelujah. I told myself, no more borrowing money. And as a personal principle, I'm not saying you should do it. I don't borrow people money. I give. Because the Bible says, I found in my Bible, Oh, no man, nothing but love. I said, that's it. That is it. I don't borrow people money. I don't care how much. I'd rather tell you, okay, I cannot meet that level, but this is what I can give you. That's why I love people. Because there's nobody I see and frown and say, See, let me tell you, this night, you will see me in your room. Hallelujah. Many of you borrow money for trivial things. You borrow money to make your hair. Is that, is that wisdom? Hallelujah. 
you borrow money to buy fridge and make your room you borrow money to buy a blackberry for yourself then you come back and find out that it's only the case that is left you borrow money to do all kinds of things see you may be tongue talking but these are some of the things that we do that land us in trouble many of our parents they borrow money and buy tire of car is that an asset you go to the bank you collect heavy loan is the credit system that is killing americans thank god for nigeria i'm proud of being a nigerian there's no credit system here if you don't have it cash trust god for it if you don't have it manage what you have in 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 in, in america and the rest you can build an empire on credit and leave your children and your children there are people america for many of you who want to run their safe journey let me tell you america is the country that is owing debt most in the world 170 trillion us dollars that's america's debt are you listening to me 20 billion is added every day let me give you statistics so you you see the kind of future they are putting for their children their children will wake up with a yoke they will not recover from but the bible says for us in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed stop envying them and thinking that their life is nice nice for what they eat hamburgers in credit sausages in credit beautiful jeeps and then they use some and push it down to nigeria and they laugh at us they say this and we are trusting god lord i trust you i can start with the tokumbo 600 000. by faith you start when you buy a car you buy is yours proud of being a Nigerian teaches us to be patient and to move at God's pace at your age in America you would have had a house and a car that you didn't pay for so they tell you when you start working then you start reducing it then many of the rich people this is a satanic agenda what you call the recession today is a byproduct of the wickedness of a select few people who are playing the world like a chess hallelujah are you getting blessed so many of you who are happy when you hear in the news that they want to introduce the credit system in nigeria and say yes we'll stop suffering in abu by the time you calculate how much you have spent on credit from 100 level till final year you turn and see that you are owing 20 million you see as young as i am god wants to bless me say it after me god wants to bless me I believe God's ways and I will apply them. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for tonight. Just pray in tongues for one minute. Say, Lord, grace to be a doer of the word. That greedy and selfish spirit that makes believers not to tithe, that makes believers not to commit themselves in giving not to commit themselves in kingdom sacrifices go ahead and say lord i take authority over that spirit that makes me think that god wants to finish my resources make sure you are praying grace to be a tighter in the name of jesus grace in the name of jesus grace to be diligent in my tithing grace to be diligent in my tithing, pray. Grace to be diligent. God's principles will never fail. It will work in Zaria. It will work in Joss. It will work in America. It will work in your village. It will work in your family. I don't care what situation you are in now or how much debt you are in. The word of God can bring you out. Make up your mind young and old to begin to live by the principles of the kingdom hallelujah meditate on these things first timothy 4 verse 15 give yourself wholly to them that your profiting may appear he said meditate on these things give yourself wholly unto them that your profiting will appear unto all. Hallelujah. 
I like you to believe it. For many of you, it will start this night. I tell you the truth. Many of you will begin to take authority. You don't take authority over the devourer just by crying and laughing. Hallelujah. I want to encourage everyone. We'll be doing this all through this series. I want to encourage everyone right now to bring out a seed in your hand. We don't do this, but let me tell you something. I will cheat you if I don't engage you in this. Are you listening to me? Bring out a seed. And we are going to pray. We are going to activate this and pray. And say we take authority over the devourer. Please bring out a seed. If you don't have a seed, just hold the hands of someone. We are not just talking about your money. Are you listening to me? We are not just saying your money, your money. Many of you, when you hear bring out a seed, you start frowning. Keep your money if you don't believe what we are doing. It's a spiritual principle to bless us and to cause us to prosper. It's a desire that everyone will prosper. Tithe in your business. Tithe in your company. Tithe as a fellowship. Tithe as a church. Be faithful in it. Tithe as husband and wife, as a couple, as a family. Do it. Practice it. Hallelujah. Bring out, bring out your seed. And we are going to pray right now. You are going to lift it up and pray and say, Lord, I take authority over the devourer. In my life and my family, go ahead and pray. And say, Satan, take your hands off my finances. Take your hands off the finances of my family. All the blessings, the financial blessings, that are mine in Christ, I receive it. Make sure. Go ahead and pray. I position myself for increase. I position myself for increase. If you don't have any seed on your hand, connect with a brother or a sister that has a seed. It will still work for you. We rebuke the devourer in our midst in the name of Jesus. We are faithful tithers. Grace to be faithful tithers. Grace to be givers. Grace to be givers. Grace to, be givers. Grace to, be givers. Grace to commit ourselves in the house of God. Grace to commit ourselves. Go ahead and pray. Say, I break greed. I break selfishness. I come against the spirit of greed. That spirit that makes me feel God wants to take all my money. Go ahead and pray. I position myself for increase. I position myself for prosperity. I position myself for blessings. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I refuse to lack. Go ahead. Break the power of lack in your life. I break free from poverty. I break free from lack. I have abundance. I have abundance in the name of Jesus for the sake of God's glorious kingdom. I have abundance. I refuse to live from hand to mouth. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 says, Ye know the grace of our Lord, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that ye through his poverty might become rich. We break the hand of lack and poverty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point very quickly. You're going to call forth favor into your life and call forth ideas, concepts, and insights. Say, Lord, I call forth favor. Let it begin to flow in my life. Favor everywhere I go. Come on, pray. Men begin to run over themselves to bless me. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the country. My gates are continually open to receive the forces of the 
Gentiles. Strangers will feed my flock in the name of Jesus. I walk in abundance. I suck honey from the rock in the name of Jesus. Prosperity is my heritage in Christ. I walk in it. I refuse poverty. I reject poverty. It comes from Satan. Hallelujah. 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 I want to prophesy over you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that as you leave this place, the Lord will give you a sign that this message is from him and for your finances. This week, I prophesy that next Saturday, next Friday, there will be tons and tons of testimonies, supernatural financial blessings. I release it to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Strangers, men that you do not know, I call them forth. The Bible calls God the Father of Spirits. Begin to speak to those spirits, my Father. I call forth favor. Everywhere your finances have been tied down for yourself, for your family. There are many people that are owing your parents. This week, in the name of Jesus, I command favor. 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 Let every closed financial door be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Go ahead and cast your seeds and begin to pray in the spirit. As you cast your seeds just in one minute, ushers, let's do it quickly. Begin to pray in the spirit. Lord, we give because we believe. We give to activate your word in our lives. We give because we believe. Inside and outside, go ahead and pray. Lord, we give because we believe. We expect a performance. We expect a performance by the Spirit of the Lord God. We expect a performance. Blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance unto her there shall be a performance unto you go ahead and pray in tongues i position myself for the blessings of the lord hallelujah hallelujah take our time this week Study the following scriptures, please, very quickly. Very quickly. Hallelujah. Genesis 8.22. Genesis 8.22. Genesis 8.22. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 and 10. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 6 verse 38 and 39. Luke chapter 6 verse 38 and 39. Isaiah chapter 45. Verse 2 and 3. Hmm. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. Hallelujah. Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48 verse 17. It says, I am the Lord that teacheth thee to profit. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. Ye know the grace of our Lord that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor that ye through his poverty might become rich. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 6 to 11. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 12 to 19. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 12 to 19.
Ecclesiastes chapter 11 from verse 1 to 10 the whole chapter Ecclesiastes 11 verse 1 to 10 Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 26 hallelujah let's stop there for now lord we thank you for this meeting tonight we receive grace to be doers of your word in the name of jesus we expect a performance by your spirit now if you are worshiping with us for the first time very quickly i'd like you to leave your seat and just run out here inside hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching